Here we are, MKM. Complete materials from MKM, guys. Get some great deals, great prices. Mention the plasters, not you, and you can get some fantastic great. Here, today we've got some insulation going in the ceiling. I need to get some more in the van, but I can't, because it's round. And Steve's not happy today. Bucket, just... Oh, oh! Why do you look like a pelican? Home beef and tomato. <laughs> <laughs> hey! What? Cross. Sorry. So you've ate both the cross? Ate them both. That's great. You're a diva when you're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so the customer's asked us to come board and skim the ceiling now. There's no insulation in this ceiling and it's a very cold room. It's cold up here, right? So we're going to put some insulation in, there, in here. We've opted to go for 100 mil of Celotex insulation, rigid insulation. Um, what do you found there, Bob? I don't know. Is it out? Where is it? I don't know. Anyway. That back, it belongs. So we've opted to go for 100 mil of rigid insulation in between these joists. Now what we're going to have to do is pack these joists out to accommodate for 100 mil to go between the joists. And then on top of that, we're going to go for uh, 30 mil of rigid insulation on top and then the plasterboard on top of that. So we're going to get some gear in and get started and then we're going to show you guys a bit of how we install this Celotex insulation. Hold it, it's going to come down this chimney. I'm going to, we're going to light it. Light what? it. We're gonna have, we're gonna. Eat, I want to use it. It's gonna light the bitch up. Light the bitch up, yeah. <laughs> Let's get the bastard going. Fire hazard. It's a fire. I know, but that's why there's a grate on the front. Wow. Oh. One there, one there. One there. Oh, What's up, Steve? Too big? Yeah, very big. <laughs> no. What? Does it not fit? Still? No. Just don't believe in it. Horrible. If you get this in your, in your eye. Blind it. Absolutely. Right. So this one is easy to cut. All I do is measure out uh, which tiles I need and I just jab this part of the tape measure into the board and just jab it and just run it down. That's going to create a nice little line and as simple as this, just crack it. Now, I could go to the van and get a Stanley knife out, cut it with a Stanley knife, but I'm being lazy, so I'm going to use a paper scraper just to cut the back. Works well, exactly the same. And posh. Easy as that. And now we've got the 30 mil insulation on top of the 100 mil. We're going to start putting some plasterboards on now. It's important to remember when you're fitting these plasterboards that you don't go too far down. Because what will happen is when you screw this up, this board will bend. So place your board on first and then drop down to the timber so that you know that you're tight up and it's not going to cause that pinching from that plasterboard onto that timber there. And also another thing to remember, it's really important that when you screw these up, that you push your board or put some pressure on it whilst you're screwing in because what will happen is you think you've screwed it up but all you've done is you've not you've not screwed it tight so it's pinching this insulation back as well so what will happen is when you plaster it as the roof flexes you'll get pop throughs now what pop throughs are is where the screw holes are I'll show you so we'll use this for instance where, where this screw is if that's not screwed in tight enough the plaster that covers it will pop off and then when you've decorated, you'll have these little screw heads showing all over the place. So it's really important that you put pressure on, then screw it. And that can prevent all these pop throughs.
quick tip for you as well guys so as you see Steve was helping me hold this board up now when you're holding a board above your head it's standard practice really whoever's screwing the boards up screws the board up as quickly as possible so that the other person can let go because they can burn your shoulders after holding these for a while so what we do is we screw four screws in that takes the weight of the board now if you screw these ends the weight of this plasterboard when you let go from the middle sags and it will pull these out it's very brittle on these ends so if you come one joist in from each end and that distributes the weight of the board just onto them four screws quite evenly now you can put four screws in provided you don't pierce the paper on the plasterboard and it will hold the whole plasterboard so your buddy can go and either cut the next plasterboard and get ready or just relax his shoulders good tip The curve which we've bonded is thicker, which is obviously taking a bit longer to dry, but it's coming out marvellous. The walls in here, the customer is going to fill and sand and decorate himself, so our job here is done. So if you guys want to see more from me, Steve and the gang, like and subscribe.